Good evening. On behalf of the Faculty of Public Administration, we welcome you to today's EDUSAT session, The Ecological Approach to Public Administration. Here we, uh, I have with me here Professor E. Vayunandan, and we both will be discussing this topic in detail. The, today's discussion is divided into two parts. Uh, the first part we will be discussing the ecological approach is what is exactly meant by the concept of ecological approach to public administration and in the later part in the second part we'll be basically discussing in detail the features the characteristics the structural characteristics and functions of three important societies given by Fred W. Riggs that is the fused prismatic and the diffracted societies so as to say when we begin with the first part that is trying to explain to you the concept as what exactly one means by ecological approach to public administration. We will first of all see as what exactly one means by the ecological approach. To just say uh, in very simple terms, we all live in a society. We all are members of a society. As members of the society, we contribute in a significant bit towards the society. We are all individuals living together in a society, in a societal system and in this society we as individuals are contributing something towards the society. So in this process of performing a significant role towards the society and as individuals contributing to the society, there is a great amount of interaction between the different members and individuals of the society. I as one member of the society, my neighbor as one member of the society, we keep on having some kind of an interaction because we are neighbors. So likewise all members of the society live together and in this process of living together, in this process of contributing together towards the society, they tend to interact with each other. They tend to have interrelationship with each other. They relate to each other. One member cannot live in isolation in the society as that he has nothing to do with the other member of the society. We all live in a pattern of interrelationship. We have relationship with each other. Why? Because we are putting together, we all together contribute to the society's development. We are dependent on each other. We interact with each other. We have interrelationships with each other. And in this process we also keep on influencing each other. I influence on my activity, my behavior, my mindset, all effects, influences to a greater extent the behavior and actions of my neighbor. And equally the other members, their behavior and actions also affect my behavior and my actions or my activities. So we tend to, all the members or the individuals who form the societal system, who form the society, who contribute towards the society, tend to interchange, inter interrelate, interact and influence upon each other. And this, can, this analogy we can in fact very well take to explain that there are various structures and institutions apart from individuals that are there in the society. What kind of structures and institutions are there in the society? There can be political structures, they can be political institutions, <coughs> they can be the socio-cultural institutions, they can be the economic or financial structures and institutions, uh, trade institutions, uh, economic institutions, commercial institutions. So there are a number of institutions or structures that also form a very big component of our society. Apart from the individuals or the members, as we all are there in the society. And as the members or the individuals of the society interact or interrelate and are dependent on each other or keep influencing each other's activities and behavior, likewise, the various structures and institutions, as I just mentioned, also keep on interacting and interrelating with each other. The political system or the political structure very well interacts with the financial sector or the financial institutions. Likewise, the social or the cultural institutions have some, some interactions with the financial sector or with the political structure or with the administrative structure to implement their policies, etc. So all the structures or the institutions that are embedded in this society, in the societal structure, in the societal system, in the larger societal system, keep on interacting, keep on depending on each other for resources or for various inputs in rendering certain services towards the society. 
the administration may be implementing policies, the political institution may be formulating policies, the social cultural institutions may be in fact looking into the social upliftment of people or the economic institutions may be looking into provision of economic resources to various sectors of the country or of the society. So all institutions and structures like the members or individuals of the society keep on interacting and interrelating to each other and in this process they are dependent on each other for various things and at the same time also they keep on influencing and impacting each other and vice versa getting impacted too, getting influenced too. This larger societal system can be termed as larger societal environment, the larger societal setting. The setting, the environment, the societal setting and the environment in which these structures, the political, the administrative, the social, cultural, the religious or even the financial or are embedded in. And they, these all structures or these all systems or these all sectors together form the larger societal environment. They are a part and parcel of this environment and they only form the societal environment. And the ecological approach is this, that it states or it tries to explain and analyze the relationship of various systems with that of the other systems present in the environment. Political systems, interdependence and relationship, with the other system, maybe the administrative system, the religious system, the social system or the financial system. Likewise, the other systems, social systems interaction with administrative system, political system, financial system, etc. So all systems present in the environment, also as to say we can say them as subsystems present in the larger societal environment, keep on interacting and interrelating interdepending interdepending on each other and in this way they keep on inter influencing each other and this is the ecological approach and here in this session we will be basically trying to see and study and explain as how this ecological approach works in vis-a-vis -vis the bureaucratic organizations. Let me in fact make it very clear here that in this session we will be, we may, we may interchangeably use certain terms like we may use bureaucratic organization for administrative organization, sometimes we can say administrative organization or sometimes we can even refer as public administration. They definitely have different meanings but for convenience sake in this session we are using these three terms interchangeably. So we will be trying to see, we will try to see as how the ecological approach or how one can in fact apply the ecological analysis to the study of public administration or public administrative organizations or to the bureaucratic organizations. And one of the most significant contributors to this area, to the ecological study of public administration is Fred W. Ricks. There have been other contributors, other scholars like John M. Goss as well as Roscoe Martin and Robert Dahl, etc. But the significant one, the one of the most important contributors is Fred W. Riggs. He, is, he, he has rather conceptualized the relationship, the interrelationship between the administrative structures as well as the environment. He has tried to focus his interest on the developing countries on the transitional countries which are in fact in the process of becoming developed. They are underdeveloped countries but they are, in, they are now called developed, developing countries because the developing countries are the transitional countries. They are, transi they are having a transition towards the developed countries yet to reach the stage of developed but they are in fact developing. So he has focused on this developing countries also known as transitional countries and he, the focus has been on studying the bureaucratic structure and functions of these societies and he is in fact considered to have explained the administrative ecologies of these societies vis-a-vis -vis the bureaucratic organizations. Where it all began for Riggs, how did he automatically came, how did he in fact came up to this idea of studying the ecological orientation in public administration? As, as you all, I hope you would have all definitely uh, witnessed our earlier sessions uh, where we discussed the classical approach to public administration in which we have uh, uh, discussed and referred to Weber's, Max Weber's contribution to the theory of authority and he had, con uh, Weber, Max Weber had contributed and brought about some ideal types of authority ideal types of bureaucratic authority and so as to speak he um, laid down certain principles of the legal Russian authority system a bureaucratic organization has. But what happened was Weber in fact constructed very ideal types, uh, various ideal types of authority which he found was very autonomous, which he considered or presumed that they were very autonomous in character in the sense that a bureaucratic organization uh, working in a developed country will be performing the same kind of functions, will be having the same kind of structure even in a developing country. 
But this was the point of contention where Rigg said it cannot be assumed in this fashion. Why? Because the context, the environment, the social setting of a, develop, of a developed country is very different as compared to the environment or the social setting in a developing country like that of India. We do not have the same kind of an environmental uh, situation or the social setting as we have in America or in other European countries. Our environmental context and our social setting is different and this has, this social setting has an impinging on the working, on the structure of the bureaucracy of the administrative organization. Administrative organization cannot work in isolation with the other systems of the society. There is so much of give and take between the two, there is so much of reciprocity between the administrative system as well as the other system prevalent in the organization or existing in the organization. Administrative structure will definitely be interacting with the political system. It gets all its policies from the political leaders. It works for the society. It implements various policies for the society. It takes into cognizance the financial aspects also. So the administrative structure, the bureaucratic organizations or the bureaucratic structures in a developed country may not be that autonomous as compared to that of the developed nations. And so what Max Weber had a contention that all the structures of bureaucracy or of authority can be uniformly applied across the world, across all countries of the world may not hold true in case of developing countries. And this was the contention that was in fact um, uh, taken up by uh, Fred W. Ricks when he said that the administrative structure of the bureaucratic organizations in the developing countries assume a highly multifunctional approach. They do not perform one single function. They have to perform much amount of work, different kinds of different types of works, various kinds of work, and therefore they assume a highly multifunctional character. They are not unifunctional. The administrative structure has to perform, the bureaucratic organization has to perform number of functions, and sometimes it 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 performs in very less amount of strictly speaking administrative function and more of variety of extra administrative functions that may be social, social, religious, cultural or even financial. And it works in close and consistent relationship with other structures of the society. So this was totally against what Weber in fact felt that all the administrative structures are autonomous vis-a-vis -vis the other structures or other systems existing in the society and we can in fact just ignore them and study the administrative organization in isolation. And therefore to evaluate or assess the administrative structure on the basis of these strict norms as given by Weber's idle types may give us misleading results. Therefore, what Riggs contended was that there was a need to develop some new conceptual constructs that would pay heed to the structure and functions of the administrative system of the developing world. The focus what Weber had was on the developed countries, but Riggs focuses on the transition countries, on the developing countries where there is so much of a difference as compared to the entire environmental setting with the developed countries and therefore he wanted new kind of conceptual constructs to be developed to study and explain the mixed character of the developing societies, mixed character in the sense that had a mixture of both the traditional and the modern structural societies or modern structural characteristics. Therefore, to understand the structure and functions of bureaucratic organization, Riggs felt that there was a need to understand, first of all, the interaction the bureaucratic organizations has with the other structures ha embedded in the society, that means the political, the social, cultural, as well as the economic or financial sectors. And also, one has to take into view the consequence or the modifying influence the bureaucratic system or organization will have on the other structures of the society and as a system also getting modified by the activities of the other systems. And for Riggs, he considered that a study, if it has to be truly comparative in nature, then it has to be truly empirical, nomothetic as well as ecological. And his ecological orientation in the study of public ad, uh, administration comes when he views the administrative processes as having a system and that system having an environment within which this administrative system is placed, it operates and with which it interacts. And this can be viewed as a corollary to the larger society which also has a system, which is also a system in which this administrative institution plays or becomes a subsystem. So whatever the society, whether it is a developed or a developing country, in order to understand the structure and functions of the administrative system, 
of, of any country, one needs to have a total grasp of the social setting in which these administrative structures or these administrative systems are functioning irrespective of the developed or developing country. The different environmental context or the setting in which these administrative institutions are placed has to be studied in order to properly understand the structure and functions of the bureaucratic system or the bureaucratic organization. He uses the structural functional approach. This is most significant of what uh, Rick's ecological orientation in public administration has given heed to or has paid heed to. The structural functional approach has been taken into consideration when he tries to analyze ecologically the public administrative organizations. Now, what is the structural functional approach? As I have just mentioned, that Riggs had said that to understand the structure and functions of the bureaucratic setup in the developing world, or for that matter in any country per se, one has to in fact see the relationship that particular structure has with the other structures in the society, that system has with the other systems prevalent in the society or existing in the society. The structural functional approach is based on this understanding the structure and functions of different systems. And that is why this approach has been used by Riggs to understand the structure and functions of the bureaucratic setup in the developing world, in the developed world as well. The structural function approach, to say briefly, is made up of two important words, structure and functions. The approach considers structure as what is a structure. It finds that the structure is a pattern of behavior which becomes a key feature of a social system. The political institution may be performing this kind of roles. So that becomes a feature that this political institution will be performing this role. Legislature will be formulating the policies and passing the bills. So this becomes a feature of that particular system. So a structure is something, a pattern of behavior which becomes the standard feature of that particular system. And irrespective of whatever the structure, whether it is a concrete or an uh, analytic one, they all perform certain roles and functions. According to the structural functional approach, the second word that is the function. What does the function mean? It is again a pattern of interdependence between two or more structures or two or more variables, the interrelationship between two or more variables and the consequences they have on each other. So the structural functional approach takes into consideration the structure, the institution and its functions, its roles in order to understand any system that is there in the society, that is, that is there existing in the social setting or in the societal environment. And it is this approach that was in fact taken up by Riggs to understand his eco the ecological orientation in public administrative organization. The, the two important premises of structural functional approach has been the study or focuses, focusing on the interdependence between different systems of the environment, at the same time analyzing the interaction the system has with that of the environment. And this was used by Fred W. Riggs in coming up with a typology which he termed as agraria and industria typology. The agraria typology that was a uh, study of the underdeveloped countries, the agrarian countries, and the industria was the study of the developed world, the industrial nations. He also gave uh, transitional, uh, society. he also discussed the transitional society, but not much in detail, and this he termed as the transitia. So basically his typology was agrarian, agraria, transitia, and the uh, uh, industrious typology, but late, uh, sooner he abandoned this typology and came up with a new typology that was the fused prismatic and the diffracted society because uh, what he in fact later on uh, he introspected on the uh, earlier typology of agraria industria where he found that uh, it was not paying much heed to the transitional societies. It was not focusing on the administrative subsystems of the developing countries. So in order to have a better um, uh, study or analysis of the developing countries, he came up with a new typology by abandoning the earlier typology of agraria industria, he came up with this new typology that is the fused, prismatic and diffracted. And here I will request Professor Vayanandan to let us know about certain features which Riggs in fact have propounded for this typology of fused, prismatic and diffracted. Thank you uh, Dolly. I think uh, you have very uh, de in detail, uh, I mean, provided the uh, various information about the various aspects of the ecology, what is ecology and what we the the psychology of I mean uh, ecological approach in what way it has impact on public administration. <coughs> I think in the last session I think uh, uh, I think we had discussed about the 
new public administration. Uh, one thing we all know that uh, administration is not uh, static. Administration is dynamic. It changes to the changing needs. So that it itself uh, makes us to make us clear that that there is some sort of an influence on the administration. So when we talk about ecology, the different uh, structures are there in the society, subsystems, which also influence the administration and, al and also the administration also vis-a-vis -vis influence the other systems. So for better, better understanding of an administration, we have to also look into the study, the various aspects of the various structures or the systems. Because uh, what we understand when we try to understand about the uh, the meaning and importance of public administration, how the administration has evolved, and how the discipline uh, discipline has I mean uh, developed. So at the first stage, uh, simply we stress upon the what we we look administration more as an uh, enforcing agency or implementation or implementing certain policies or programs. So in the process, we thought that we can build up a science of public administration because we are mostly involved in implementation. That means we are mostly involved in the factual things. So they are mostly factual things. So that way we can build up science of administration. So in the process, uh, in the second uh, uh, stage of evolution of public administration as a discipline, we come across the principal uh, stage where uh, there has been some sort of uh, thinking that administration is administration irrespective of whether it is private or public. Everywhere we need an organization where a group of people are there to, I mean, interact or I mean, aggregate, I mean, have some aggregate interest and work together to accomplish some predetermined goals. So principles are important to systematize or to concretize or to make them work together in a very systematic manner to take up some sort of I mean concrete efforts in, in realizing the objects of the organization. Then later part we also come across the third stage where we stress upon that administration is, is something which is not something mechanical. It is in human organizations. Human beings are at work. When human beings are at work there are values, sentiments, emotions which are also equally important which has to be also taken care of not that human beings are something cog in the machine. Then we have behavioral aspects, then behavioralism also comes into picture. Then so much of uh, scientific analyzing of administration creates a lot of confusion in the scholars. And ultimately there is a crisis in public administration. That cri crisis also help us to come out, for, I mean, because when you are pushed to all, naturally crisis also creates certain innovations. So in the process of innovation, we come across what is this uh, compared to public administration, development administration, ecological, uh, I mean, approach, uh, new public administration, I mean all these things. So what these, uh, how they have come up because it is something demands or uh, some sort of uh, needs which have arisen so that way that way the public administration scholars try to address to those problems. So when we say last class you have seen a new public, what is new public administration? What One way it has, uh, I mean responded to the ecology, environment. In environment they felt that the public aspect of public administration has not been really dealt with. Uh, dwelt with. Only the administrative aspect has been uh, taken care of. So we have become so mechanic. So public aspect is that you have to respond to the, uh, I mean needs and the demands which emanates from the society. You have to be real, I mean relevant. You have to be value ridden. I mean you have to be, I mean change oriented. Uh, and you have to be, I mean, what, I mean, because, see, public administration is administration which work for public interest, public good. So when you are not looking from that point of view, what way the public administration can be, I mean, so that way it is also one way the impact of ecology on public on administration. Public. So coming to the, the ecology, real ecology, see, as rightly said by uh, my colleague <coughs> Dr. Dolly Matthews, saying that, Weber, no doubt, Weber has his own, I mean, uh, when he tried to provide the legal rational authority, okay. that is the bureaucratic organization, ideal, legal, ideal, ideal type. type, what he thought that, because he want a public organization to perform activities more in an efficient manner and more rational yeah. manner. And so what is this organization for? They are there for to, I mean, exercise authority. What is authority? Authority is nothing but uh, power with acceptance. Hmm. And acceptance should be based on some legal rational. It's not that acceptance because I like him or uh, I like his personality or he is a king or a god. So that acceptance does not lead to, I mean, legal rational authority. But accept acceptance 
I mean, power with acceptance, which is based on some legal norms. Legal so that rules. way, uh, laid down rules, it makes you rational. So he thought that a public organization with ki this kind of an, I mean, ideal type will be performing the all the activities in a more efficient manner, and it and that way he created a model. Model. But unfortunately. What we understand that public administration, I mean, as we have seen, ecology plays a very important role mm -hmm. because every culture or every, I mean, I mean, what you call the nation or every state has its own, I mean, impact on the administration. That way, the the administration also builds up according to the needs of that particular state or particular environment. So what we try to understand is that if you want to really build up science of public administration, it is not that you sit at one place or one organization or one country and try to develop a science of administration. So you have to be comparative. If you are comparative, you can develop science of administration. So that led to comparative public administration. So comparative public administration is, I mean, what we understand is against the ethnocentric. And ethnocentric, it is not ethnocentric. It means one place, one organization or one. So when you try to compare, then came the problem, see, because you all know that compared to public administration group was headed by F.W. Ricks. And it was the Ford Foundation which gave the funding mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do some sort of a research and build up some uh, data regarding the various administrative systems of uh, world. world over. So in the process, then he found out that in the developing countries, he could not, I mean, have a model which he want. See, what is model? It is nothing a parameter. You have to suppose measure or survey. You have to have something. Suppose I am an MA student. Suppose I wanted to know what, I mean, what is my level. So naturally, you compare with an MA student. So I mean, in a the criteria. same process. Yeah. A so a criteria. So he thought that the model which has been present, that is the Weber model, it is not possible to have the comparative study. Hmm. So what do you try to understand that, see, because most of the third world countries have the symptoms of the, what we understand, what we earlier, Dol I mean, yeah. my colleague Dolly said, that agrarian and industrial. Industry. Agrarian represent the traditional administration, which he gives the example of imperial China. And uh, the yeah. industrial yeah. represent the developed society, which he gives the example of, of America. America. So in these two, it does not fit into it. So mm -hmm. how to evolve it? So he tried to come out with this uh, typology, which could not be, I mean, in the later he added that uh, trans, uh, trans ETA, which is also, there were a lot of criticism. So he abandoned that and came out with what is called the fused diffractor in between the prismatic. So like a prism, and when a race goes, it is, I mean, divided, I mean, it's to start with, it is fused. When it enters, that is, I mean, what we, I mean, it is prismatic and if it is out, it is diffracted. Mm. So what he tried to understand, as rightly said by Dolly, that, I mean, he used structural functional approach of, I mean, Talcott Parsons. What is that structural functions? See, he says that, as he has rightly mentioned, what are structures? Structures are, I mean, the the organized uh, behavior, behavior, a pattern of any. So when standard. he said, what are the structures created and what are the functions performed by the structure? Suppose you have one structure, and perform all the functions, whether political, economic, social, administrative, then he categorized them into fused. Mm. That one structure performs all the functions. Then you have, there is a specific structure created to perform a specific function. Particular function. Uh, you call differentiation or diffracted. So you have, I mean, what is called diffracted. So in between, you have a, a society, which is called prismatic society, what, I mean, it has the symptoms of both because it is in the process of tra I mean uh, passing out to transform to the diffracted, diffracted to I mean sorry uh, okay. diffused to diffracted hmm. so in the process it con it it contains side by side I mean uh, the by characteristics, uh, characteristics of, of both the uh, fused as, as the, the prismatic uh, sorry so diffracted, uh, diffracted. diffracted so that really fits the model to evaluate to study to analyze the I mean, he's, I mean, because he's mostly looking at the, uh, I mean, compared to administration, mostly in the third world countries. Country. So he came out what is called the, uh, the prismatic, prismatic society. societies. So when we try to understand these prismatic societies, because as we have rightly said also earlier, yeah, this Weber's bureaucratic model cannot be, I mean, taken as a model to analyze or study in, in the compared to perspective. So he comes with a, what is called prismatic societies. Okay. So he has not much concentrated on the, what we understand the diffused or diffracted. He more concentrated on the prismatic model. Why? Because in prismatic model, because he, he I mean, the survey or the study which he is going through the comparative was mostly 
the developing or the third world countries. So coming to the prismatic societies, what we try to find out is that I think uh, in a prismatic society we have uh, three important characteristics uh, which are I mean pre presented. Before we go into the uh, characteristics of prismatic, uh, we will try to go back to the earlier uh, typology of what is called that uh, agrarian. agrarian or industrial. In agrarian, uh, you have certain, I mean what we understand, the certain aspects such as what we have, the uh, the ascriptive values are given more important. That you are, I mean, by birth, I mean, you also get the, I mean, because if you are born in a good, uh, I mean, family. family, naturally that will create, give you, I mean, certain respect benefits. or certain benefits. Where, I mean, plus you have a, what you call, as we have some certain character that diffuse, that is all functions are performed by one structure and very particularist. Whereas if you go to that imperial, pa the, sorry, um, um, the industrial. industrial, you have universalistic. Mm. I mean, there are nothing like values. Values are, I mean, <coughs> I mean come, come out through within the society because of the various other things, not because of your birth or birth. I mean, the society itself creates a values. Then we are, I mean, specific means what we understand is that for every specific function, specific, I mean, structure is created to perform it. Or, I mean, a structure is created to perform a specific function. function. Then what we say, achievement. So it is mostly based on the achievement. So it's not that how, I mean, it is mostly uh, how people, I mean, individual initiative or whatever. But if you come to the, his, the other uh, model which is come as fused prismatic, here what we understand uh, in between fused and uh, diffracted societies, we have what we understand the, uh, the uh, if you take the fused which uh, represent the uh, the particularism or the if you take the diffracted which uh, represent the universalism in between if you try to look into the what what exactly prismatic it is selectivism so neither it is particularism or universalism it is a selectivism then if you try to take the another category that is achievement that is what you call the uh, the uh, I mean, ascriptive values or achievement. Ascriptive values because you are born in that family, you, go, you are, but the achievement is you achieve through your work. But whereas in the, what we understand in the, uh, the prismatic, it is attainment, how you attain. Then another important what we understand, that is the intermediate category between uh, the other, I mean, polyfunctionalism or poly, but basic important characteristics which we come across is we try to understand the prismatic society, the administrative system. So, in a, the administrative system is called Sala. And why, I mean, this administrative I mean, system has three important characters because we are more interested in this uh, society on the administration because we are concentrating on administration. So, when we talk about the, the administrative system, there are three important characteristics of this admi administrative system. system. What is it? First thing we come across what is called the heterogeneity. What is this heterogeneity? I mean, what we understand in a, any prismatic so society, a, we come across a simultaneously presence of uh, what you call side by side, uh, quite different kinds of systems and practices and viewpoints. And uh, like you, have, India is the best example of this prismatic, prismatic society. So you are seen here that we are in a studio in, uh, I mean, EMPC. We are directly interacting with uh, the all the study centers through, uh, I mean, one way, I mean, two-way video and two-way audio. I mean, that way because we have new, I mean, EduSat, and uh, we can talk, I mean, live. But you have villages side by side where the people cannot talk. Also, they may not be having telephones. Also, they, I mean, for, I mean, if they want to communicate, they have to travel so many of, I mean, maybe by, maybe they may not be having transport. Also, so I mean, what we understand is. Uh, the heterogeneity refers to side by side presence of you have a highly intellectual class I mean other way you have uh, highly illiterate people or you, if you go to the hillsides there are tribals may, no, may not be seen the, uh, the new world also so we have I mean what we understand the that co coexistence yeah, of, of yeah, uh, you have the traditional practices as, as, as well as the modern, modern practice and also presence of the I mean the intellectual classes and also the, the I mean everything side by side what we understand this is what we refer as an atrogenic sometimes even uh, the there yeah. may be a village headman who may be giving decisions, uh, decisions. and there may be some uh, all all functions are maybe political economic uh, social everything is being performed by, uh, by the 
village. Yes, so yes. whereas in an urban side you you come across a municipality providing uh, I mean uh, something of public utility services or you have a gel boat to provide water, power boat to po supply power, yes. uh, all I mean. But whereas if you go down to other uh, other places, everything is in one place. So or I mean everything is I mean what we understand pr presence of side by side I mean different okay. practices and. Uh, I mean, of traditional yeah, and modern, modern. institutions. So this is one practices. important characteristic. Other is formalism. What do you mean by formalism? I think what we understand is that uh, there is a de degree of discrepancies, a gap, what we understand between the formally prescribed and effectively practiced between norms and realities. So, I mean, our constitution uh, clearly says, I mean, something that uh, they, they, I mean, there cannot be, uh, they, they, as per the so and so article, you can employ, you cannot employ children below 14 years. But the the reality is, you see everywhere, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the children. children who are below 14 years. But you have already, I mean, <laughs> prescribed norms. But the reality is, I mean, because it's of contrary. contrary. So there are a number of things. Like you say that public uh, smoking in public places is banned. But everywhere in office, uh, office is a public place. So everywhere you find people smoking. So these are the things which we try to find out uh, in the the formalism. So this is what other important characteristics of a salon. The other is what we understand the overlapping. Because there is an overlap because you have the two kinds of, I mean, symptoms of the, uh, the fused and diffracted. So you have one way a specific function performed by the uh, what we understand the uh, you create a structures to perform specific functions. You also create I mean you have some structures which perform all the functions at the village. So there is always what we understand uh, we there is there is a overlapping between the diffracted structures and with the undiffracted structures. So in the process what we understand is that the outcome of this is, I think, in the again, if you take this diffract, I mean, overlapping, we first thing what we understand because of this uh, overlapping of diffracted structures with undiffracted, uh, I mean, it leads to nepotism, polycommunalism, or bazaar canteen, or whatever, polynormatism, or lack of con uh, consensus, or the power dis uh, I mean, distribution that is authority versus control. What is nepotism? That is, you give more importance to your relatives, I mean, because here, I mean, in the, there is nothing like uh, what we understand, a patronage system kind of thing is provide, uh, pro uh, available, that is, you favor your relatives or friends or something, in your, in any kind of administration, whether in appointing them or in providing services to them. Okay. The other is the polycommunalism. What do you mean by polycommunalism? Because you, I mean, you have a lot of ethnic and communal or uh, religious groups. So every groups try to fight for their own, I mean, what you call interest, our own needs, our own, I mean, in the process there will be high competitive and highly, rivalry, uh, 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 rivalry and uh, I mean, highly, exp I mean, what we are trying to understand that very, I mean, trying to have each other competing and there will be a, a kind of a, a highly, I mean, what you say, competition. Then the other is what we understand, the bazaar canteen, because here, in a developed society, the market determines the uh, price is determined by the market okay. market forces. Whereas, uh, in the what we understand in the traditional, uh, traditional maybe certain whatever is being decided by the traditional values or whatever. But in between the prismatic society, I think this is being decided by the what we understand the group which normally dominates. So they provide certain. I mean, what you call services to their own, I mean, uh, what you call own uh, group or community or other things in a more, what you call, in a constitutional manner uh, rather than to normally to be provided who are being needed. So in that process, we have what is called bazaar and canteen. Canteen is something concession. Bazaar is something market. So we, we are neither canteen nor bazaar in between. So this is what we understand. And ultimately, what is, I mean, what, I mean, polynormatism, other important is polynormatism. What is that? See, there is a lack of consensus because uh, presence of number of religious and uh, I mean ethnic groups and uh, because naturally everyone fighting for their own, there is, will not be any kind of, I mean what you call uh, the consensus. So in the process, again the problem, I mean 
is on the administration. Here, I would just ask one question to you, if we have enough time. Uh, like we said that uh, uh, basically the ecological approach in the study of public administrative organization basically sees how the administrative system uh, uh, affects, influences the other systems in its day-to-day -day functioning, at the same time get influenced by the other subsystems that are working in the ecology, in the environment. So that may be the effect of the political system on the administrative system, that may be the effect of the various social uh, system on the administrative system. How do you find, as RIGs have tried to explain this interaction or this interrelationship between the bureaucratic organization in a developing country, in a prismatic society, as having an uh, interrelationship with all other systems, like whether it, this bureaucratic organization in the prismatic society interrelates, then how it interrelates? Or what is the influence of uh, other systems on this bureaucratic organization in the prismatic society? How he has tried to explain that? See, actually... Uh, or whether we can see the impact of other systems on the prismatic society's administrative structure? That is what. Uh -huh. See, what exactly... Like when you say bazaar canteen. Yeah. Is it the effect of the financial sector uh, economic on... System. Economic, economic system. system uh -huh. on the administrative uh -huh. stru structure? Uh -huh. So yeah. likewise, if you can explain uh -huh. it. See, like you have seen... Uh, when you say nepotism or polycommunalism or uh, what you talk about uh, it basically lack of it's mostly society. Society, 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 social system. Because see, I how, feel the administrator how, uh, also is belonging uh, to that same society. Because you are from, see, oh, administration is a right. person who is not something who comes, he is also part and parcel, parcel of the society. Of society. But what Weber feels that once a person enters the, I mean, uh, yeah. bureaucratic organization, yeah. I mean, the rules make him depersonalized. Depersonalized. What do you mean by depersonalized? That he will, I mean, become impersonal. Become impersonal. What do you mean by impersonal? Impersonal does not mean that he becomes rock. Impersonal in the sense, he is a human being, but only thing is, the emotions and sentiments yeah. are taken away. Okay. Yes. So, in behaving with the people, who, I mean, as a administrator or a person with if in the bureaucratic he has not to take into uh, consideration I mean, he will any uniformly perform his functions yes. irrespective of persons he likes or dislikes. dislikes so that is what he tried to find out so that is what he is bureaucratic but what but, happens in uh, real but whereas Rick says no it is not, not possible. possible because in a prismatic society because in a, you are in a transition this have an because he, he also I mean we also notice that not only administration modifies it m administration is also modified, modified by the, the other, other, other structures. So he tries to analyze and say because high, high, I mean high, highly presence of various community groups. Yeah. Naturally, they have to. I mean, they wanted to take every, I mean, aspect in within the, I mean, administration. Yeah. So they wanted to use or see that administration works for them. In yeah. the process, what will happen? There is a high, I mean, what you call a social interaction. Yes. So naturally that fall on administration. So naturally the administration may not be performing its activities as it is supposed to, to perform. Manifested function uh, may not be performed, yeah, reality yeah, may be may very perform, different. different. Like you cannot bring consensus. Yes. Because, see, how you bring consensus, yes. again, it's a, a big, because it's a, again a prismatic society. So if you take traditional society because there is a king or a, some person mm -hmm. who holds it. Yeah. So you cannot, and the other is, in a highly diffracted because and it's one a highly... More thing, do you feel that the bureaucratic organization or the administrative system gets affected by the political system? Yes. How? Yeah. See, see what we understand that uh, naturally the when the, the in the prismatic society, the political system also represents the society. Not only society, <laughs> I feel you know what... Yeah, uh, I feel basically the politicians impinges yes. on the bureaucracy and the bureaucracy in fact has to just uh, sometimes so timidly follow uh, the politicians. One way you say, masters. I mean, you say, other way also if you say public choice theory. What yeah, is public yeah. choice theory says? Yes. That, see, both are interested in their own uh, uh, aggrandizing. In the process, who is lost? The people. The people. So in the same way here also. The see, political the, uh, system and yeah. the bureaucracy so one works way in excess. Pol I mean, what you call that uh, public choice also, one or other way, it reflects the prismatic societies society uh, only, because that is not found in the, way, the huh? developed societies. Society. So, in that process, so the, see, whatever it is, the society, what we have in a prismatic is highly volatile, because of presence of um, number of communities, factors. factors. So, in the process, they try to, 
uh, influence. So it will not only try to influence in the uh, in the political system, in the social think, system, um, yeah. in the economic system, yeah. but also it also falls equally on the administration exactly. because administrative system is also manned by people from the society. Exactly. So that is what I think we understand in the ecological approach. Okay, I think uh, we have run uh, too short of time, and I would just wish to thank Dr. Professor Vayanandan, and I hope some kind of responses would have come from the students, then it would have just uh, helped them help to make our discussion more interesting. I hope we wait for more responses in future edu sessions. Thank you.